Hi, welcome back to part 2 of the Game Boy Keyboard Experience. I got this and we're gonna use that and without further ado, let's dig in. And if you haven't seen part 1, I'll link that up here. And if you're wondering what that is, that's a vase based on the Lamy Safari and I call it Pen Pal. And there's a video about that too, and I'm gonna link that here as well and down in the description. Let's go on with the keyboard, shall we? So the first thing I needed, of course, was a 3D model of this keyboard. And luckily Logitech has some very nice planar views on their website. So I just imported one of these and scaled it to size and just built that keyboard layout. And the rest is fairly straightforward. This is really a nice and simple build, which comes in handy for me. I also built a little battery door in here. You'll see why later. And that's pretty much it for this keyboard. Next thing I did here is of course, insert this keyboard into an assembly and build another keyboard layout, this time with the angled buttons and all the Game Boy sizes and details that you've seen as an Illustrator file. And yeah, that's the clunky blocky version of it and that already looks pretty cool it's nice to see it in 3d and I gave it that kind of wedge shape you can see it also has that one rounded corner asymmetric uh, Game Boy look and what it also has and this is where the battery door comes into play is I put in a little block that you can slide out to access the battery door on the original keyboard. Let me suppress that again and we'll go forward a bit. Or before we do that, let me show you an alternative version that I built. Because this is kind of what I showed you in the affinity file that I would have like one block and another wedge block supporting that. And yeah, I also built that one, but I thought that looked a bit too, too thin. And also this wedge detail and how everything meets isn't really so nice, but I still wanted to, to show this to you. Because sometimes you gotta kill your darlings and do something else and good things will come out of it. So yeah, I think this looks really cool. And let me browse through the rest of the details here quickly. Some rubber feet. I'm wondering if I can put the on off switch here, even though on the original keyboard it's on the side. We'll see how that goes. And I hope finally we're getting to the point where, yeah, here. This is the detail that makes it, I think. I, mean, I also really like the detail of the battery door, but... I think these ribs, they really make it look really cool. You can check out Module Labs by Gary Meyer III, I assume this means. And he has some nice photos of the original Game Boy. And because when I modeled this, I didn't have my Game Boy handy, so I needed to look for some photos. And he has uh, very nice photos here. Check out his website, modulelabsdesign.com. And, and he also sells 3D printed accessories this is actually the best one, the TX6 Defender. He also has a YouTube channel, Module Labs. Check this out. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. 
using that plug as a lock. Pretty genius. All right, that's enough of that. So unfortunately, I won't be able to print the whole thing in my 3D printer. Unfortunately, this is too big, just a bit too big and we'll need to split that up. But well, there's still some more details to fix and I will start with only a section, which I already prepared. Unsuppress this and what we're left is, is this. I put a screw boss in here and you can see when we go into a see-through mode and look at it straight on, it uh, just leaves enough room for the Logitech keyboard um, to fit in there. And I need to add some ribs to hold that keyboard in place because I don't want it to float around in there, of course. And putting ribs there is the, the smartest way of doing that because you can sand down these ribs if they're a bit too tight and you don't need to sand down like big surfaces. You only have like walls that are two millimeters thick. So yeah, that's, um, that's how it's gonna go. And we're gonna 3D print this and see how it turns out and see how it works. Let me throw a section through here and show you these buttons just have like a tiny flange in the bottom and the idea is that they will press onto the buttons of the actual Logitech keyboard so I don't need to disassemble anything. I tried, I tried taking off one of these keycaps and yeah, they come off easily, but they're um, not that easy to reattach. It, it's doable, but I don't want to do it for all the keycaps and replace them. And I thought this would also be nice for people to then actually have their own version of it printed by a Logitech keyboard and just have a cover for it. And if the keyboard inside ever breaks or something goes wrong with it, you buy a new one or you send this in for warranty or whatever. Anyway, let's look at the 3D printing. So we're back in Bamboo Studio and you can see here the parts are spread apart quite far and that is because I picked two print them by object so that I can print different colored parts but I don't have to switch filament for every layer which would be kind of wasteful and yeah you can see here when you bring them too close it'll show you a perimeter that you need to uh, that shows you the distance that you need to keep that's a fairly handy feature and slice this And, well, not much to see here. Let's just send it to the printer and check out the result. So the parts came out fairly nice, um, except for well, the spaghetti you saw in the time lapse. But well, that happens. Whatever. I reprinted the rear cover here so that I can screw them together, and that's what uh, we're gonna do here. We're gonna tap that hole with an M2 thread. I really like that. Uh, method for, for prototyping instead of uh, using like brass inserts that you heat up 
that's nice too, but especially for uh, quick prototyping, um, this is so much faster. And it's amazing how strong it is. All right. And I'm using an old uh, drill chuck here to hold the, the tab because, well, as you can see, it's way nicer to, to hold and to turn than a typical T-shaped uh, holder. So here's the M2 screw and that, uh, oh, come on. That goes in there nicely. Whoop. And you can see this is one of the ribs that's supposed to sit. Whoop. That sit flush against the the keyboard here, and we can already see. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, don't have any alignment features here. That was a bit uh, premature to not print that, but well, can't uh, remember everything. And now we can just screw this together. With our little M2 screw here. Alright, that looks super cool and now we can, I printed these on like one sheet, so to say, ideally for um, the final version I would put like a sort of spring in between here, so I can have one set of keys that I only have to insert once, but this is gonna bit quick and dirty prototyping and now let's see how this fits on here as uh, well I have to manually align this but yeah that works that works like a charm this is great um, I also put a hole here to be able to see uh, these uh, status LEDs here. But I want to turn that on for those to turn on. And let me try to align it. Ah, uh, yeah, well, I assume, I mean, I can hardly see it, but I also, I can hardly see these. I don't know if I put my hand like this, if it makes enough shadow. I can't even tell if it's aligned. Oh no, it's not. Well, I might have to find a better solution for that, but I don't know if there's, there will be any better solution. But when these are aligned, then it works. So that's a success. And well, on that success story, we're gonna end it for today. And yeah, come back next time when we're gonna 3D print the whole thing. Thanks for watching. Let me introduce you to Werk, the sponsor of today's video. Based in Copenhagen, Werk is a contemporary kitchenware company dedicated to developing honest and high quality tools for everyday use. Follow the link in the description or go to werk.com and sign up for a newsletter to get 10% off your first order.